While sorting is a significant task that we do on computers, the reality is what we really use computers for the most is searching. And we use them to go look up and find information for us. If we have a collection of data and we don't know anything else about it, we want to go looking for something, it turns out that the approach that we have to use is what's called a sequential search. And this is basically we're going to run from the beginning to the end and we're going to look at each element in turn and say, is this the thing I'm looking for? Is this the thing I'm looking for? There are a number of methods on the collection libraries that do this. We've talked about some of them. For example, the find method is given a predicate and it just goes through and it checks, do you satisfy the predicate? And then the next one, does it satisfy it? Does the next one, does the next one, does the next one? And as soon as it finds one's, one that does, it returns that value. Index of is basically a sequential search. Um, there's also an index where, and then we've talked about there's a last index of and a last index where. What I'd like to do is I would like to write some of these methods for ourselves. So we're going to create a new file, searching.scala, and let's write our own version of index of, and we're going to pass it an array and this time we're going to pass an array of ints instead of an array of doubles. And part of that is because of the way in which ints compare nicely. Doubles, after you've done arithmetic, you run into some challenges there. So we're going to use ints instead. We need the array, and then we need to know what it is that we're looking for inside of this array. Actually, let's call it, I don't want to use i, c is an int and it's going to return to us an int which will be the index. If it doesn't find the thing that we're looking for, it's supposed to return negative one. If it does find it, we can stop immediately and give that back. Because we have the ability to stop immediately, it's useful to do this with a while loop. So we're going to have a var, I'll call it i for my index, and it's gonna start off at zero, while i is less than the length of the array and it's not the thing that we're looking for. A sub i is not equal to c. What do I want to do? Well, I want to move to the next one, which i plus equals one, okay? So fairly simple code there. When we get to the bottom here, it's tempting to just give back i except for the fact that that would be wrong in the situation where we didn't find it. Because we said when we didn't find it, we're supposed to get back negative one, not the length of the array. So instead, we're gonna have an if here. If i is less than a dot length, then we're gonna give back i, else we're gonna give back negative one. So there's an index of, we can test that. We can load in our file. And nums equals an array of sure, that works. Index of nums Let's look for the number one, zero, one, two, three. Sure enough, there it is, that's the correct value. Let's go looking for the value seven. It's not there, so we get a negative one. Okay, so we have a working index of. If we had wanted to do a last index of, we could start at length minus one and we could count backward Turns out that an advantage of the last index of is we don't need this if here because it would wind up stopping at negative one if it didn't find it. The other method that we've spent time talking about and that we've used a fair bit other than index of is find. And so we can write our own find. It's kind of an interesting thing to work on. So it takes an array of integers as well. And of course we could write versions of these that use lists, but right now we're, we're writing them for arrays. 
and I need to take my predicate. Now this predicate is a function that takes an integer, takes one of our values, and returns a boolean for whether or not it's the thing that we're looking for. And you might recall one of the things that was interesting about find is its return type, which is an option of the type of thing that's in our collection. If we don't find it, we're supposed to return none. And if we do find it, we're supposed to return sum and that value. Well, it turns out that the code is going to look similar to what we did with index of. We're going to start at 0 while that index is less than the length. And this is the part that chains, changes. We're not doing a check to see if it's equal. We want to keep going while it's not satisfying the predicate, a sub i. So while p acting on a sub i is not true, because p is a function that takes an integer, a sub i is an integer. And as long as that is false or not true, we want to move on to the next one. The other thing that's different here is what we return. We're not so supposed to give back an index. If we find it, we're supposed to give back sum and then the value that we found. If, it, if we don't find it, we're supposed to give back none. Okay, so let's load that back in and we can call our find. We'll pass in nums. So how about we go looking for the uh, first number that's divisible by three. Underscore modulo three is zero. Well, that happens to be the nine. So there you go. Okay. Uh, that was the first value that was divisible by three. Um, how about something that's divisible by three and two? Well, we'd need something a little bit more complex there. I modulo three is equal to zero and I modulo two is zero. That would be six because it's divisible by both three and two. So we have a working find method. You can see that the way these, these sequential searches are very easy to write. Okay? The only downside of the, of the sequential search is its order n. Okay, so if there are n values, I potentially have to have this while loop go through all n of the values. Now, n is much better than n squared. You know, so this is searching is much faster than the sorting was. But most of the time when we're searching, we do a lot more searches. Okay? You might only have to sort your array once, and then you might go searching for stuff a whole lot. So really, this isn't quite ideal but it does work with everything. We don't have any requirements on the array that we're searching in uh, as long as we're willing to deal with the fact that it's linear in speed so that the number of operations scales along with the size of the array. We'll come back and we can, we'll see how we can do better than that if we happen to have some additional information about the thing that we're, that we're sorting in.